Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over the difference between negative and positive work. In this video, we're going to talk about vertical motion. In the previous video, we went over the difference between negative and positive work for horizontal motion. And you can link to that video right here if you're interested in horizontal motion. But this one, vertical motion, is going to be incredible. Check it out. Okay, we have an object here. And we're going to raise the object five meters. We have an applied force, a gravitational force. And we want to figure out how much work does each of those forces do when we raise that object up five meters. Now, in this video, we're talking about negative and positive work, so we're going to really focus on whether the work is negative or positive. But if we have an object and we raise it five meters, and the weight of the object is 45 newtons, and we raise it up at a constant velocity, we're not accelerating, we raise it up at a constant velocity, then the applied force is 45 degrees. If you want to raise something up, and just kind of move it up you have to apply a force that's equal to the weight. No acceleration in this case. Now what we really want to be able to do in this video is figure out the work done by each force. How much work does the applied force do? How much work does the gravitational force do? And really, one of them is going to be negative and one is going to be positive because the work is Fd cosine theta. Well, the force in each case is the same. The distance is the same. And it's really cosine of theta. And what is theta? Well, theta is the angle between the displacement and the force. And that's the thing that's going to determine whether it's negative work or positive work. Okay? So for the applied force, it's Fd, the force is 45, we apply a force of 45 newtons, over a distance of 5 meters. Well, what is theta in this case? Well, theta, as we said, is the angle between the displacement and the force. Well, what is the angle between this displacement and this force? We have two lines that are parallel. They're pointing in the same direction. The angle between those lines is 0 degrees. So cosine theta in this case is 0 degrees, and therefore it's going to be times the cosine of theta. Well, what is the cosine of theta? Excuse me, what is the cosine of zero degrees? Well, you should remember from your cosine curve, you have your calculator there, you can look it up. The cosine of zero is plus one. So the amount of work that the applied force does is just 45 newtons times five meters times plus one. It's the theta, the angle that determines whether it's positive or negative. In this case, it does positive work. A force that acts in the same direction as the displacement does positive work. Okay, now what about the gravitational force? The gravitational force is acting opposite. The object is moving up. There is a downward force. There's a gravitational force. What's the angle? Okay, we already know the force is 45 degrees. Gravitational force is 45 newtons. Excuse me, 40, 45 newtons. The object is moving five meters. Well, what's, the, what's theta? Well, theta is the angle between the displacement and the force. Well, the displacement points up, the force points down. Therefore, the angle is 180 degrees, so it's 45 times 5 times the cosine of 180. Now, from your cosine curve, you should remember that the cosine of 180 degrees is minus 1. That means it's 45 times 5 times minus 1. That means it's minus 125 joules. When you raise an object up, when you apply a force and you raise an object up, you do positive work and gravity does negative work. You act in the same direction as the displacement. Gravity acts in the opposite direction. The angle between your force and the displacement is zero. The angle between gravity and the displacement is 180. Negative work and positive work. Okay, now let's just try the opposite situation. What about when we lower something? Okay, when you lower something. Now the distance is the same, the forces are the same. We're going to lower this object 45 newtons, 5 meters. Okay, and again, we want to know how much work does the applied force and how much work does the gravitational force do? Well, the applied force, it's 45 newtons. When you lower something, you apply a force equal to the weight of the object. It's not accelerating. We said it's 5 meters. Now in this case, the angle between the applied force and the displacement is 180. And the cosine of 180 is minus 1, so therefore it's minus 125 joules. 45 times 5 times the cosine of 180, which is minus 1, is 125. Now hopefully you're catching on by now. How much work does the gravitational force do? Well, the gravitational force is acting in the same direction as the displacement. That means the angle between the displacement and gravitational force is zero, and the cosine of zero is plus one, and that means that the gravitational force does plus 125 joules of work. Okay, so when you raise something up, you do positive work, and gravity does negative work. When you lower it, you're taking energy out of the system. Okay, you're taking energy, you do negative work, and gravity does positive work. 
All right, so that's it. That's the difference between negative and positive work for vertical motion. Don't forget in the previous video, we did negative and positive work for horizontal motion, which you can link to right here. Okay, so that was vertical motion. Thank you very much. I think it's kind of interesting. You do positive work, gravity does negative work. You do negative work, gravity does positive work. All fits together. That's the nice thing about physics. It's like a big puzzle, it all fits together. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found it helpful, give me a nice comment in the comment section below or a thumbs up. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.